Hey, we on? We are. Yeah, okay. Thanks for the heads up. What's up, JQ? How you doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, it's day after Father's Day, you know? So a day celebrating you and me and our dad and all the other dads out there. It's pretty nice. It was pretty nice, huh? Day celebrating you and me and Whoa. our dad and Sorry. all the other dads. There we go. Yeah. Now. Now nah, we're good. There's nothing better than hearing your own voice repeat it back to five, two and a half seconds later. I'm used to it, but have you, I can I can imagine it would be strange for you. Yeah, I, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. Yeah, Dad is uh, speaking of fathers. Our father's on and said he's been waiting. Uh, I've been waiting too, Dad. I don't know what's up with your youngest kid. You know. So, yeah, you know, just had to like hand deliver homemade tea to the other guy who couldn't come downstairs because he's like, I'm busy. I did come downstairs 10 seconds later, but I'm just telling anyway, you. I do appreciate Ooh. I do appreciate the delivery. Wow. It's popping. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Jay dropped me off this nice thermos of ginger decoction. So uh, a lot of times when we think about a tea, we think of an infusion where you're taking dried herb or tea itself, the tea leaf, and you're putting it in water and just letting it soak in boiling or hot water or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, and you do it, you steep it for X amount of minutes and there you have tea. Ginger is a root or a rhizome, right? It's a bulbous, uh, thick, tuberous kind of a uh, mass and as such it does not really lend itself to easily just soaking in hot water and getting the full potency extracted out of it Much yeah the work the workaround is that people pulverize the root yeah and then just do a quick infusion in a bag or whatever yeah but it doesn't come out like this Whew. So we, we've been wanting, we've been talking for a while about making a decoction. So Jay, today, um, why don't you tell us what you did to make this decoction? I mean, I, did I you make it, did Greta make it, who made it? I made it, yeah. Okay. Um, I put, um, you put it in cold water, you bring it to a boil, and then you bring it to a simmer for about 10 minutes. That's really it. What, put what, explain what you did. The root, any root, for instance, you know, but you chopped it up. Did you slice it? No, no, it? we have it cut. Okay. We carry it cut. So okay, so this is dried cut root. This is not fresh. Not fresh. Yeah, we're going to do, well, like maybe next week we'll do it with fresh ginger root and see what the difference is. Um, gotcha. Okay. I just want, I figured it wasn't fresh, but I just wanted to know because fresh. No, there's like, um, you didn't, you can tell you don't have like that ginger juice flavor in this. Yeah. It has Good. that dry root feel, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And by that, I would say the difference being, uh, the ginger root flavor has sort of a juicier, more sweet. Hot. Yeah. There's a sweet, hot, like, like, uh, sour bite in there that is lacking in here. This is the hot, hot. This Would you agree? Hot. I mean, I'm, I'm like, whoo. This is a, you know, it's ginger, so it doesn't get full on hot pepper, but I would say it approaches hot pepper. It has the mouth feel, a lot of it, the heat of putting some peppers in a soup and drinking like a peppery soup that's been boiled, right? Yeah, and it just never quite gets there though. Right? No, no, it, it turns, so if you hate, if it's if you can't stand peppers, you could probably still stand this. Although this has like, it's nice. Wow! Certainly, immediately I felt today's a very allergy strong day. I'm feeling it, and Greta's got bad allergies today. And this whole weekend, I was feeling it. I should have been drinking this all weekend. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Um, other benefits we can talk about for a second. Yeah. Obviously, people use ginger for indigestion, um, you know, and for uh, nausea. So you'll see it in everything from um, just like I have an upset stomach or I ate too much to, you ginger know. Ginger trips, 
travel sickness, on the travel to sickness to, to chemo to everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. And even uh, there's some ginger extract, although I think I would want to be careful that you don't go chopping up ginger. If you're pregnant, consult someone, but yeah. there's ginger, there is some ginger extract in those preggy pops, those lollipops. Stick, um, with, stick with either find someone that can, you know, yeah. guide you through it or use a product that already has it in a dose that's safe for a pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't make a decoction and just start taking massive amounts of ginger. No. But hey, hey, John, happy Monday. Um, but yeah, that's it's also T. You'd be interested in pops wood too. It is it is amazing for diabetics? Yeah, I think via the kidneys, right? It's like kidney support is the is the what they talk about as the diabetic. Well, two, two reasons. Two reasons. One is that it, um, the kidney cleansing aspect of it. Um, and then the, um, it has tons of zinc in it, um, which, you know, we know for killing a cold or people use as a preventative during the flu season, right? Yeah. But, <clears throat> but it also, zinc plays a huge role in secreting insulin. So. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then they were talking about that's sort of where the. I don't know if you're looking at the same thing I was looking at, but like then by lowering blood sugar through the insulin levels, you also helps with weight loss because you don't get as many cravings when you don't have high blood, you know, uh, when you're not going these big blood sugar spike peaks and valleys, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And then, you know, we always use ginger for general inflammation. So really everything but especially arthritis muscle pain inflammation due to allergies any sort of inflammation in the body this is a really good tea for people like you said if you're not pregnant this is an excellent daily tonic tea right yeah i mean it's powerful you know i don't know i gotta be honest like i i it's great for me right now um you could probably cut this in half concentrate wise. Yeah, did you do 10 minutes steeping? And yeah. you mean boiling? Yeah. No, yeah. boiled and then 10 minutes uh, uh, simmered, you know? Simmered, yeah. So uh, it's it's powerful. Yeah. I don't know, I mean like, I'd wanna cut it a little bit if I were gonna drink it every day, or I would say add like a little bit of something it feels like i can understand why people put honey in it for me with blood sugar it's not what i would do but i would i, I would say like maybe some monk fruit or a little xylitol or something like find a way to sort of balance it out it i think a little like especially as an allergy uh, boost like this plus like a little teaspoon of local honey would be awesome and then maybe over some seltzer on ice would be <laughs> really good cool. ah, yeah you're getting fancy. Um, yeah, you know, well, this weekend, I think I told you I hurt my knee. It was crazy last night. I could barely bend my leg. Um, it did get better overnight. I put some Tromiel on it and other things, but uh, I'm excited to be drinking this right now because my knee is a problem. But also, Jay, I thought this was interesting. We were outside this weekend. I realized part of the reason why I'm so sensitive to bug bites and I have a bug bite right on sort of the where my knee joint sort of where the two bones meet. And to, I couldn't even realize it till I woke up this morning and some of the inflammation had gone down and I had like an itchy bug bite. So I'm wondering if I got bit right on like what was already a sore joint and I just have like inflammation. I have like inflamed knee, I definitely do. Cause I don't feel injured yet I can't bend my knee normally. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So are you saying that you had that? I think I sort of like, I did a bunch of, I did some exercise that involved pedaling my knee on, on Friday. Uh, and I think I already was sort of inflamed. And then I think I got a bug bite or something and it sort of went into like swollen mode. Like literally the whole jo joint was swollen. It still is kind of, but it's getting better than it was yesterday. It's crazy. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, like I can do normal actions. It doesn't hurt. But if I try to bend my knee all the way, like tuck my my foot under my body, you know, like you sit in yoga or something like that, 
like it feels like my knee's gonna explode because there's so much swelling in there. It's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, so good time to drink ginger tea was my point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think John's asking, would this work well with cinnamon? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it would work well with cinnamon. Here are the things that I would say for sure with cinnamon, especially for blood sugar, ginger and cinnamon. Cinnamon is naturally, um, you know, like one of the great things about sweet potatoes are generally pretty healthy for you. But for people who have blood sugar issues, that much starch can be uh, some even a, even a resistant starch like that. Yeah, it can lead to a spike. Right? But putting cinnamon on your sweet potato actually brings down the blood sugar boost uh, that you get from eating that starch. It's almost like they taste great together too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like nature's telling you consume me together. It's sort of like the Reese's peanut butter cup of nature. Where they, <laughs> cinnamon and sweet potato came together and, and they, now we can great barely, taste that taste great together. We can yeah. barely think of them apart, you know? Like yeah. it's I, I like, you know, it's one of those things like sesame seeds and and like really like good tuna, right? Like like I can't I actually when I eat sesame seeds, mom had that sesame seeds with salt, like that salt yeah. substitute. And every time I eat sesame seeds, even when I make, I make bagels for the kids and stuff on the yeah. weekend sometimes, but when I make them and put sesame seeds on them, I taste fish. <laughs> I swear I taste fish. You're like a, you're like the, the Pavlovian dog of fish eaters, huh? You're like, like we just ring a bell and you start drooling. I'm telling you, there's something like, even just tasting a sweet potato, I'm like, oh, it's already got cinnamon, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's just like, they're so inextricably linked in my head, you know? Uh, I, the, yeah, but any, any, any hard bark decoction is the way to get out the benefit, right? Like the point is a leaf, you would do this, you would potentially, it would be overkill, right? On yeah, you kind of, you maybe leaf. damage some of the, it would, it would taste scorched if you, when you boil tea. Not just taste, probably yeah. the, the, the compounds that you're trying to get out you know what I mean? Are more fragile. Yeah, I just don't know enough about it to say what's happening chemistry-wise. But I get, But yeah, either way, you just there's no point in doing it uh, because you can get out the compounds you want to get out in a dried leaf. Well, I, I have overdone it, like leaves and and flowers, and it's it's not that it tastes scorched; it's that it doesn't taste at all. Well, it's, I agree. And it, it, I mean, it kind of comes back to one of my favorite topics, which is why green tea tastes better when it's done less, why I don't like to boil my tea, then pour it right on. Mm -hmm. I either don't get it to boil, bring it in less, or I wait and let it calm down and get cooler before I pour it on green tea because it just tastes better. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it does. You know, my, my version of that, Jay, is that and this is sort of embarrassing to admit, not embarrassing, but kind of a silly thing, but um, my parents will probably remember that I started drinking way too early uh, as a kid, um, socially with friends. Um, and I drank gin and tonics the first time I ever really drank drink, I was a kid. And I drank so many gin and tonics and I got sick. And I would say for the next 15 years, I could not drink tonic water without just feeling disgusting. Which like, is ironic because that's people- It actually that. helps. But no, no, no. I know, it actually helps with that. But I felt like I would just taste gin and and then feel sense like- Sense you know, memory. Yeah, sense memory. Strong sense memory. Well, I think I the first thing, I think if you've ever gotten sick off alcohol, the first thing you get sick off, it takes a decade at least to recover from. yeah to truly recover yeah i worked very hard to be able to become a gin guzzler after that i'll just say i that. worked very hard to consume <laughs> yeah. yeah. and and now i've given it up but uh i had to first climb that mountain again and then walk <laughs> down instead of fall off the cliff uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so we got out of the city this weekend yeah we did got in a lake Lake life. Lake life. Was... Yeah, thanks to our brother G, uh, who is uh, 
found a spot for us uh, that we could go get some family time, get in the water, just hear waves lapping at a at a little shore in a wooded area. It's beautiful. That so. was special. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still. I feel like I'm. St I've still got the afterglow. Everybody's feeling a little. It's like a little sad, and you're like a little tired, but you're feeling a little like real, real, real full. Yeah, it's the afterglow. It's it's sort of the drug of nature, right? Sort of giving you that, and of family time together. Sort of having that. Uh... Yeah. What did you say? I was like, Cora was like running around, and you said. It's like moments with these kids and then moments with these kids at a lake house is like 10x. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Yeah, belated. Uh, hope you had a great one. Um, we did. We did. Yeah. Um, Man, I am like I, I'm like a little sweaty from this, and I'm in the AC right now. But whew. I'm I'm right below an AC vent, so for me it's perfect. I feel like I'm warm on the inside and chilly on the outside. I like. I it. definitely feel like hot inside though, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm feeling uh, like pick up, breath. pick up John's. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like fiery breath. Good. Um, you know, I want to say to John's comment about cinnamon. So I would say uh, you can, you know, we used to make this, we have made, and I still sometimes do, like an immunity soup. And ginger would be, when you're not feeling well, we'd always throw ginger, some cloves of garlic, turmeric. You can kind of mix it, whatever you want, like a bunch and of pepper. pepper. You can always cut up an apple and throw it in there. A lot of people do. Yeah, so like you can put in a bunch of things and do a decoction of all of these things because they're all sort of hard uh, substances and you really get, uh, you can get a super spicy like kind of, that that thing makes me sweat. So like you make the full immunity soup. I take it and then like, I'm sort of like, I'm in a cold sweat by the time I'm halfway through the, the cup or the bowl. Yeah, well, the idea is like when you're dealing with like a bug or some kind, you make this decoction of tons of fresh ginger, a chili pepper, and a bunch of garlic, right? Anything else you want to add in there, lemongrass, people do different things. But you're essentially making this broth, this, this vegan spicy broth, right? Yeah. And then you sit in the tub in a mustard bath while you drink that. And then you're just like, you pass out right after. You literally, I, I've done it where. It's actually kind I, of dangerous. You need someone to check on you in the bath. Yeah, yeah, because I was going to say, I've done it where I got out and I'm literally struggling to like sort to of keep my wits about me just to get to dry off. Like you, I brush my teeth before this if I'm going to bed or whatever, because you just want to get out, wrap up and like get in bed and just like let your body do its healing. You know what I mean? Do yeah. its fighting. You're like mobilized. It's, it feels like it's mobilizing all the sort of immune system to set, uh, all your white blood cells and everything like that to just like, like come get yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. They're like, we have one purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. So. Um, we are... Lots of stuff reopening, huh? Have you noticed? Um, I don't know. Are you nervous, man? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I mean, I'm not like, I don't walk, I don't run around being in a blind panic, but I'm, I'm a bit nervous. I mean, it seems like states that are ahead of us in reopening, especially where they weren't locked down, you know, where they didn't do as heavy of a lockdown as we did, they're getting increases in pandemic, you know, in COVID numbers. Doesn't seem good, yet we keep on kind of racing ahead. And then I've passed by bars that uh, on their patios look pretty damn crowded. I get it's outside. Hopefully that's enough to keep it away, but uh, I'm a little, um, I'm a little, 
I'm concerned. Yeah. And and I, I say that about myself too. Like I I'm I'm I, just feeling I, myself getting like lax, you know. I find it hard to keep the sort <clears throat> of vigilant <throat> mindset. And let's be honest, like we're potting up with our family. And so it's also just like, well, if we're all feeling that at some point things become more and more porous, right? So it's not that like I'm fearful in a, in a way that I think it's like gonna be tragedy, but the, re the re reality is like let more porous sort of borders on the edge of your quarantine uh, mean that it's more likely that some of us are gonna get sick and spread more easily, so. I don't know. That said, I know a decent amount of people now, mostly on the East Coast, but who have had it um, and have, are either getting through it or gotten through it. And I know a couple of people, I don't know people who have died personally, but I know a couple of people who know who have family members or loved ones that have passed. They were generally fairly vulnerable, but we all read these stories, you know. Um, that there are people who were not vulnerable, who had bad situations or really bad situations, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, in that sense, I'm kind of nervous. Like, it'll be honest. <clears throat> um, I will say, I, I, I'm not claiming this will keep it away, but for me personally, my mindset is, um, it's an airborne, it appears to be much, obviously spread way more via airborne droplets than touch. So I still am washing my hands, but I don't, I'm not sort of, I'm not freaking out about touching things as much as I am washing my hands after I touch something. And kind of like, it seems like the mask is just a good idea in general. And we should be more concerned about that and less concerned about like, I touched something that you touched. Sanitizing everything all the time. Yeah, and, and for me, so it, then my thinking is, if it's through airborne, then and we know that you swab in your nose, and we know that there has to be a certain load, a viral load, like one tiny particular... I mean, let's be honest, we've all been exposed, right? Yeah, in one instance of the virus, uh, one, I don't know what the right virus, you know... Yeah, what the count is called, yeah. Yeah, like one... One account of one of the virus probably not going to do anything to you, but gigablomp. I think it's a gigablomp. Yeah, yeah, what you said. Um, if you, you know, if you, um, it, it needs to get someplace and then replicate. So you need a certain amount, and then you need a place to replicate. So for me, I've been doing a neti pot or a variation of that. I've been using the nasal pure squeeze bottle, but I do so a nasal thing. irrigation every night and every morning, right? Every night and every morning. My feeling is just like, let's let's just avoid any sickness, whether it's the virus or not, and let's sort of knock it out by making an inhospitable uh, sinus uh, environment. Right? Now, but now, like, I'm thinking about other things, like, okay, like, lots of, yeah, for sure. Danny McHugh says, as a bartender, I'm worried. Yeah, Danny. I, I mean, I feel like, you know, I'm, the hard part is where, you know, maybe as a bartender, you have to wear a mask, but I feel like there's this sort of loosening up of like, we're both okay, right? Among friends, among everybody. Like, I don't need to wear a mask with you. And I feel that as well. So I hope your customers, you know, you wearing a mask protects your customers, your customers wearing a mask protects you. You yeah. know what I mean? So we all need to do it. Uh, go on, Jay, I cut you off. No, no, I was just, um, I don't even remember what my train of thought was, really, but. John, you talked about jumping I was, off. Oh, I remember. I was thinking about, um, you know, like, while we're, like, sort of sheltering, even if it's this modified, slightly more porous, the fact is, like, kids and people, but especially kids, are getting a lot less sick just generally. Right? Like my kids this spring would have gotten sick like two, three times each. And yeah. we got sick once in the winter, like the typical winter sickness. That was like a week of craziness. And, you know, some of them puking, some of them not. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 
and then nothing. And then I'm like, what is the long-term effects of non-exposure? You know, like, like, what about, like, fine, my kids are two, four, and six. They've had two years at least of exposure. And I, I can tell you from, this is anecdotal, but I can tell you from experience and recent experience mm -hmm. is that the age they get off breast milk, usually like these days, at least with the, the peeps that I, I know is, is around between six months and a year if they've done breast milk, right? Mm -hmm. And then till, till they're two is like, it's like they're sick every two weeks, right? Yeah. And I just feel like grateful my littlest actually got sick a bunch of times between one and two you know, before this happened. Yeah. I'm just like, what about those kids that are like, they're one and then this happened and now we're all going to be very sterile and much more distant in general. And air airports are going to be very different than they used to be. Even if some people decide I'm not going to wear it, like it's still going to be much more sterile than they were, right? Yeah, I don't know. Uh... Sterile is not the right term. I mean, I, I don't know what you mean, you but I'm saying, but like yeah, yeah. just flu season in general is going to have a different vibe, right? Like, you know, but I, I don't think that, I mean, you're, you're, I think you're talking about, am I right? You're kind of referring to like, you need to build an immune system. And I'm just wondering. There's, there's sort of two aspects of that. Like, hooray, your kids haven't been sick all the time. I know. We're not getting sick. And then there's like, are they being exposed appropriately uh, in order to build a healthy immune system that can respond robustly to future uh, exposures to various yeah. bugs. So That's what I'm wondering. It's just a, a thought I had because Greta was like, well, now, like, let's see next cold and flu season rolls around. And people, if they have any symptoms, if you just had a cold, you went to work still, right? In fact, you were kind of like, it was seen kind of like negatively if you didn't just muscle it yeah. out. Like if you don't need to be at the hospital, like show up, right? Yeah, yeah. And now it's like, I think the vibe there is going to be very much like stay home because co-infection well, rates and all kinds of stuff, right? I, I agreed. Uh, I mean, I'm of the opinion, and I know it's easier for me to say because my kids are older, um, but I'm of the opinion that like, let's just lock it down a little bit. Like whatever happens, let's assume we can get past COVID, right? Maybe there's an antiviral drug because I don't think a vaccine's coming anytime soon, although hopefully it will. Um, but let's say there's an antiviral drug that can keep it relatively benign, right? Um, so if that's the case, then we're back to like, it's a normal sickness, like a cold, like flu, like whatever. I would like us to lock it down a little bit more. Like why wouldn't we start wearing masks in general when we're going in stores in the February, like, I don't want to get sick. It sucks. I don't want to get you sick. That sucks. Like, I don't, I kind of, I'm, a, I'm for the idea. I don't think there's any, I don't understand this idea of like, uh, and I'm not Absolutely. trying to go off on this tangent, but like a patriotic or political element to not getting sick. Like as if somehow like getting sick make, means you love freedom. I, I don't get that. But anyway, my point is like, I'm, I'm just down for the, the idea that we all get less sick every year during the season when most of us get sick. That seems like a great idea to me. And I also think that this was cool in the sense that one of the good, and we're not cool, but one of the good effects of this is that we sort of had to rapidly evolve to a lot of remote work possibilities so that we can, um, you can be working, not everyone, obviously like, if you're here on my line packing packages on the line here at MERS, like you can't pack packages remotely. That's a problem. You can't necessarily receive product remotely. So there are certainly physical things that we need to do in one place, but we have customer service people all over. And if you were sort of like had a cold, but you could work like, hey, group, take the use your phone app, get on, log in and be able to answer questions and you don't have to miss work, but you don't, you don't, you keep people safe, right? Yeah. If that's your thing. I'm not saying you'd have to do that. If you need to rest, just rest. But my point is like, if you were like, I'd like to work because I don't want to use my PTO and whatever. Yeah, a bunch of reasons, yeah. But I don't want to, but I, but it's a bad idea to go spread this to everyone else, right? Yeah, or like, or, power you know, to you. It, it, or get on public transportation or even just, you know, like, 
I need to just be in my pajamas and I can probably muscle this work day out. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pop said, uh, and New York Times said a lot less people are going to doctors, yet they're managing well. Does it say something? Yeah, absolutely. I would say yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we'll see. You know, there's probably some people who are, should be seeing a doctor and aren't. I mean, but, there's always that case. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's not, that that problem isn't isn't specific to this no, but it might be it might be worse right now. We'll see. Time will tell. But I also think there's this idea of like, hey, you're you're a lot more robust. You know, you're 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 a lot more durable, I should say, than than you give yourself credit for. And your immune system is stronger than you think it is. Um, and like we said, maybe you're not being exposed to as much too. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's definitely just true in general. Even if you're trying, even if you're like, you know, an uh, ethic kind of person, there's like enough people around you that are not, that you're getting less exposure, you know? Totally. Totally. And in the meantime, you can just drink some ginger, chi ginger tea and uh, ginger chill, out with us, chill out with us virtually. And uh, there's very, very little risk. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I know you gave me a nice big thermos. I poured another one into my, by the way, my, my metal porcelain covered or uh, ceramic, uh, you know, I like these enamel, like they're enamel uh, teacup. Ah. All right, man. Well, hey, good Monday. Hey, we have some good stuff coming up this week. What are we doing? Uh, I have it here. Let me see. Wednesday, we have the, uh, Rudy. Rudy from Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, Rudy Flores, Executive Director of the Lincoln Square, uh, Ravenswood, Raven, what is the right? Lincoln Square, Rockwell, Ravenswood, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Rudy will be joining us. Uh, I'm very excited about that. He's a great guy and talking about what's happening, opening businesses, some cool stuff that's planned for Lincoln Square um, and just kind of, yeah, life in general in the in our neck of the woods and uh, in the city uh, as we kind of reopen, hopefully carefully. Um, and then on Friday, uh, yeah, we have my our very good friend, Tiffany Monique, who is yeah. a legend jazz singer. She's going to do some singing for us and drink some tea with us. She's yeah. a long time customer in Lincoln Square. Yeah. Um, and, and a collaborator of yours for many, I mean, like you're a collaborator of hers for many years uh, in her band BMC, Booty Movement uh, Coalition. Right? Across many projects. Many bands. But um, <laughs> how about, do you remember when we met her? Do you remember? Is it in the store? No, no, no. Uh, when was it? I don't know. It was, um, it was two days or one day, it was the day after 9-11, it was 9-12, at the California Clipper. And I went for a drink with you and Rachel because we didn't know what to do. And she was there and she just basically said like, I don't know what to do. And did some songs and said, does anyone feel like they want to say anything? And I got up and started rapping. It was just her and a guitarist. Oh my God. I remember. And from Thank that you. moment, we've been great friends almost 20 years, so. Um, well, I got married three days after that, literally. Um, so I feel like that was swept up in like, it's almost just like one blur from 9-11 that morning, waking up. I remember those moments. And then it's all just blends together until our wedding of, are we going to do this? Are we not? Whatever. But yeah, now that you say that, I remember that night. Wow. Wow. Awesome. I can't wait to talk to Tiff. Um, it's going to be great. And Rudy. So please join us on Wednesday and Friday. We're going to have some fun, drink some tea. Um, yes. I miss the California Clipper too. <laughs> and, and it's one of the businesses that uh, didn't make it through this. Really? I believe so. Oh, no. Are yeah. you pretty sure. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure. Um <clears throat> John, make yourself some ginger cinnamon tea and we'll see you on Wednesday. 
Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Much love. Uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Keep it spicy. Keep it spicy. Yeah, keep, yeah this is, my nose just started running on for the outro, you know, <laughs> from the ginger. <laughs> All right, see you. Later. See ya.